Hey, this is Kat from Red Mountain Shaman, and I share shamanic wisdom through dreams, visions, nature, synchronicities, intuition, channeling, art, music, photography, and shamanic journeys. Welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I will be sharing some spiritual experiences I had this week, along with a channeled message from the Angelic Collective Ananda. And I, at the end, I'll be sharing a beautiful meditation from Tao Malachi. So in meditation this week, I saw our earth and it looked like wave upon wave was just moving across the earth. Then I had a dream about um, a flood in a basement. Then Michael and I did a solstice ceremony. And in that ceremony, the Elohim of the Blue Ray came forward and gave us some very positive information and if you've been following my channel every once in a while they will come through the Elohim of the Blu-ray and they always leave very positive and empowering messages and Yeshua actually came through also and he explained that the Elohim of the Blu-ray are actually really high vibration beings of light that are creators of matter and earth and I just thought that was really interesting that he said that. But then the next day, this video came out with a very popular YouTuber who said that the Elohim are evil. <laughs> so that was pretty interesting. I think he knew that was coming and he wanted to prepare me for that. So I will be getting together with uh, my friend Kimberly Palm, who has a YouTube channel called Spiritual Growth Journeys. And we're going to be talking about this subject because of the... YouTube spiritual community seems to be blowing up about this <laughs> subject. So we're going to say what, what we feel about the Elohim and the experiences that we have had personally with them. Um, most of the information I received during this solstice ceremony was personal, but a few things I can share is that Miriam also appeared with Yeshua, also known as Jesus and Mary. They put a crown on our heads and they said, kings and queens of new earth. And I've gotten this several times. And there's another channel that I used to follow. And that person also said, if you ever hear a shaman talking about the kings and queens of New Earth, don't listen to that. So it's so funny because there's just so much um, different perspectives in the spiritual community. But I asked Yeshua what this meant. And he said that I would learn a little bit deeper meaning about this in a channeled message. And that information did come through today. I also saw that he and Miriam merged together as one, and I was told that they were one in their mission. It was explained to me that sometimes souls come in together on a certain mission, and that they're stronger together in that mission. And so they kind of incarnate in, in a lifetime together. And so it was explained to me and my husband Michael that music is one of our missions and that even though it doesn't seem like a lot of people listen to it, just to not give up on it. And this week we, we were kind of inspired to do a new project and I'll talk about that later on. On the solstice evening, I also went to the Springs and there were two young women in their 20s there and they struck up a conversation with me. We all ended up being on the same page with what's going on in the world, so that was encouraging that people of all ages are seeming to be waking up right now about all the corruption in the world and in our different systems. So it's just a matter of finding your tribe and the people who resonate with you. These two girls, they brought a big singing bowl and some beautiful roses, and so it was such a calming experience to be surrounded by these rose petals in the water with the music of the bowl. And now for the message from Ananda. We are the Ananda Collective, of which your higher self is a part of. So, in essence, this information is coming from your own wisdom that is begat from within higher realms of consciousness than what you are currently incarnated into. This is one reason why channeled information is valuable to humanity. It comes from an unobstructed viewpoint, without ego and without the blinders of human perception if it is done correctly. 
by correctly, we mean setting intentions for the highest good and truth to come through. Setting intentions for your ego to take a back seat and to have an open heart to receive. No being is above another, but there are levels of consciousness and perception that can be accessed beyond your limited human perspectives if the higher aspect of yourself is accessed with love and open-hearted connection. This takes practice and everyone receives in different ways. Listen to the stillness and observe. Take a back seat to what your ego may desire or want to hear and let higher information flow in. This being said, the time is coming when more and more of you will be able to easily access higher realms through meditative practices. There are some who have volunteered to be on earth at this great time of intense change in order to guide others into the light of a new dawn and show others that they too can be receivers of the light. It is in your divine birthright to have intuitive insights as you journey along your earth path as a way to navigate through your lifetime and experience what your soul desires as well as what your deeper purpose is. As your year comes to a close, we admonish all to find a spiritual practice that works for you individually so that you may start to access your higher self and the knowledge the divine within you has to offer. We recommend finding time out of your busy schedules to venture into nature and enjoy the peace, solitude, and divine frequencies that can assist you in achieving a deeper connection with this divine spark within you. Nothing is of greater importance because as you access the divine within you, you are always guided to your highest good. The coming year ahead is going to bring more tumultuous scenarios, the breakdown of old beliefs and paradigms, as well as the continued revealing of corruption within your societal systems. The Earth herself will also be showing you her purging of old energies with a display of eruptions, waves of energy, and actual waves within her waters, as well as quaking and strange weather patterns. If you are in tune with the divine within you, there is no need to worry as you are guided to where you are called. Many have migrated to new areas to live, and this migration will also continue as people heed their personal calls from spirit. Pay no mind to the naysayers and those who would seek to thwart your own internal navigation system. Find those who are a match to your frequency of love and heart connection to spirit as you begin to heed your inner callings and start to rebuild new ways of being, healing, eating, and moving through your realm with confidence in the Creator's guidance. Many will soon find themselves co-creating with the Divine as they surface as way-showers and leaders of New Earth. These are what we like to refer to as the new kings and queens of Earth as the old guards start to collapse and fall away. The kings and queens of New Earth have been through many lifetimes of learning and progressing as souls and are now the elders who bring back their wisdom for a new cycle. The false leaders who have been operating on service to self frequencies of greed and control will no longer be tolerated as Earth's vibration continues to rise. As more light continues to envelop your planet from the sun and the solar beings within it. Yeshua is indeed one of these solar beings who carries the Christed light. His return is that of the light of the blessed Christos emanating from the sun in the form of solar light waves. This is the form of his return at this time on earth. Many have noticed the changing appearance of the light and the sun within your sky. The light is intensifying. Those able to integrate it are able to raise their consciousness as these solar waves continue to filter into Earth's sphere. Many are not ready for this kind of rainbow light 
which infuses the rainbow light body with its natural flow of life force energy. You may feel uncomfortable at times as the remembrance of this light flows back to you. Many have incarnated with dominant rays of color and frequency, but the light body encapsulates all of the rays and these rainbow colors are now returning within your skies and within your bodies. Move your body, drink clean water, eat fresh whole foods, ground yourself barefoot on the earth when possible. This will all help you to integrate the intense light at this time. We are the Ananda Collective, and we are just one faction of angelic beings that surround you in love at this time. There are a multitude of light beings watching over Earth and assisting humanity in this great shift as we speak. We hope this brings you comfort and joy at this beautiful season of light. And so it is. Amen and amen. Thank you, Ananda. So a few years ago, Yeshua told me that he would be returning in, in my lifetime and I kept pressing, well, how is that going to look? And I just wasn't getting any answers. So I, I guess they were felt that I was finally open enough to um, receive this message that he's returning in the form of light and that he is a solar being. I thought that was very interesting. And um, I looked up the meaning of the Christos light and I found this Gnostic interpretation that makes sense in relation to this information presented in this message. This is from an excellent article I highly recommend reading entitled, Jesus and the Christos, a Gnostic Perspective. Quote, Orthodox forms of Christianity would have us believe that the Christos is isolate to the person of Yeshua, Aramaic for Jesus, and that he alone is Christ or the Messiah. However, Gnostic Christianity holds a different view of Yeshua and the Christos. Yeshua is viewed as a Christ bearer, and the Christos is viewed as a light presence. Thus, to Christian Gnostics, Yeshua is a mystic and a magician, a light bearer. Rather than something isolate or exclusive to Yeshua, the Christos is considered to be embodied by others around the Master Yeshua, acting as a center of light, transmission, or Christ revelation. So in other words, as Yeshua said, even we can do greater things than he did. So we are all entitled to achieve the Christos light or the Christos consciousness. I also noticed that this transmission was given to me on December 22nd, 2023. So that would be 222 portal. And I looked up the number 222. It has to do with soul purpose and spiritual alignment, which was also mentioned in this message. I'd like to end with a meditation from Tao Malachi, who was the author of this article entitled Jesus and the Christos, a Gnostic Perspective. If you're driving, please take a break and pause the video, or if you're operating any heavy machinery, and find a place to sit back or lie back and um, find time and solitude to listen to this. Enjoy. Sit back where you will not be disturbed. Let your body find its own natural rhythm of breath. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. As you breathe, relax, yet remain alert. Consciously let go of any tension, stress, or negativity in the body, heart, and mind, allowing yourself to be present in the moment, clear and conscious. Let your body continue to relax. Your emotions become still and your mind become quiet, enjoying the innate peace and joy of the moment. When you are settled, gently shift your focus to a point within and behind your heart and visualize a spiritual sun shining there, aware that in this light presence and in your breath, you are innately connecting to all that lives. 
Abide in this awareness of sacred unity for a while, conscious of yourself as spirit connected. When you feel ready, envision a ray of light coming down out of the spiritual sun and magically appearing as the image of the risen Yeshua before you. His feet are not on the ground, but the image hovers in the space in front of you. He is wearing an inner robe of white brilliance and an outer robe of violet purple. His body shines like the sun and he is enshrouded with a rainbow aura. Holding this divine image in mind, you may have a conversation with this light presence or you may abide in silent meditation in the divine presence and power, whatever you feel inclined to do. Whether taking up conversation or abiding in silence, feel the warmth and love of the Christ presence within and all around you and sense the depth and knowledge, understanding and wisdom in the living presence. Imagine the Holy One smiling upon you and blessing you and see light pouring from his body into your body, your whole body becoming pervaded and enshrouded with light. Whatever you seek, peace, healing, knowledge, or any other gift, imagine that it is transmitted to you in this way. When you feel the transmission is complete, chant the name Yeshua. As you chant the name, visualize the divine image dissolving into fluid light and pouring back into the image of the spiritual sun in your heart. Your whole body filled with a light presence. Let yourself merge completely with the Christ presence and as you fall silent, ending the chant, let your mind become the mind of Christ, your heart become the sacred heart of Christ, and your body become the body of Christ. Be united with Christ and the Christed light. Abide as long as you can in unification with the light presence, and then consciously ground the energy, letting go of the meditation, and just being present for a few moments. Then, you can go about whatever activity you have in mind, aware of yourself as a light bearer. If you feel called, stay for a minute and listen to the music as we give you a moment of silence. I hope you enjoyed that meditation. So the author says this is a good way to enter into gnosis and communion with the indwelling Christ and to progressively develop self-identification with the Christ self and the inner higher self. All manner of spiritual experiences may unfold from a meditation of this kind. And it's not uncommon for individuals using this method to acquire psychic or spiritual gifts. Essentially, with regular practice of meditation, one is consciously activating the light presence within oneself and invoking the divine presence and power into one's life and one's dreams. Join to the study and 
com- contemplation of the Gospel of St. Thomas or other wisdom teachings, it will naturally tend to bring about deeper knowledge and understanding and hopefully serve to bring forth the gospel of truth that's within yourself. Gnostic Christianity is replete with methods of mystical prayer, meditation, and sacred ritual, all of which have the aim to self-empowerment and self-realization. He indicates a way to read and study the Gospel of St. Thomas or any other scripture one might choose to put one in touch with the divine presence and power in oneself. I usually measure the truthfulness of channelings or meditations or spiritual paradigms or practices by if they are empowering or disempowering, so always pay attention to that. Thank you for listening today. I hope you all enjoy your holiday season of light. And if you'd like to support this channel, please press like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you'd like. And we'll make a new video for you soon. Take care.